Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. Hope you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tangled Stars. So guys, let's go ahead and jump jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm train, you are up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Let me lower the volume a little bit. Okay. All right. As nice as this was, I couldn't keep the gaping hole in my stomach from getting larger by the second. Hey, hey, don't stop worrying so much, will you? You can live here until you find another place to live, and I'll support you in every way. Uh, we could find a way to talk to your parents if you want, but I'll make sure to take good care of you so that if there's no way for you to go back there... He smiled brightly once again, and I could feel the pain from earlier coming back to me tenfold. Why? Why are you helping me? I try to speak through the tears, but my voice comes out choked by them. I clutch my chest in pain. Not physical pain, but emotion filled with regret and suffering, as I know I can never go back. Because you're my friend, and I want to fix this. He says this as he embraces me tightly, patting my head as to reassure me, and it sure works. This was the worst birthday I ever had by far, but it had some good to it too, as I don't have to hide who I am anymore. Over the next couple of months, Andy helped me get back into an apartment close to our university, and soon enough I got back on my feet financially and slowly recovering from that fateful day. So that's pretty much the things that led up to this moment. I said while holding onto my necklace, a little smile creeped up on my face. That was really not an easy life you had, buddy, but I'm happy it turned out well. Have you spoken to your parents after what happened? No, not really, and I think it's better I keep it that way. We took idle sips of our coffee that got a bit cold. Anyways, what about you? How was your life? Ah, well, it's quite a lot to unpack, so let's see. Nope, okay, we're getting into Derek's backstory. Oh, God. Okay, already? Oh, hey, it's Brian! <laughs> Brian from Echo, not not Brian, yeah, not Brian from Zillio. Wake up, you lazy shit! My father's voice, my father's voice rumbled throughout the house, shaking the walls literally. I opened my eyes, full of fatigue, and glanced over to the clock, 5:23 a.m. I get up with a sigh and walk to the living room. I met with the sight of my father laying down on the couch watching TV. The bed and floor were full of crumbs and liquid stains. Give me another stack of beers. Dad, it's five. Dad, it's 5 a.m. I have school today, which doesn't... This doesn't even start. Let me, uh... Attack speed. Okay, there we go. This doesn't even start until 8 a.m. Plus, I don't give a shit. I raised you, therefore you do as I say, you useless shit. Now do what I told you. Life wasn't always as hard or unfair, and my father was actually such a nice guy. We were all so happy. That was only when my mom was alive. All right, sweetie. Got everything for school today? My mother was a sweet soul, always kind and pure. Never shouted at me or made me feel bad. She walks on. She was always there for me and cared for me no matter what. Yep. I got a big, I got a big plan for us later today, champ. My father was very outgoing and lively at the time. He always wanted to include me in whatever activities he had planned. Oh, tell me, tell me. <laughs> you just have to get through today and see. I don't know how or why it all went so wrong in the blink of an eye. Pop. As someone was passing us, their front tire burst. Then they started losing control over their car. Everyone hold on! The driver chose to drift right into our car to avoid more casualties. But my mother... She was in the driver's seat, so the impact affected her the most. She lost her life on the spot. As if that wasn't breaking enough for my father. The other driver confessed that it's alright as she was a beast. Ever since that day, my father just changed. As if his poles got completely switched up and... Hurry up! Yeah, I am coming. I think I should probably do a more light voice for younger younger Derek. I bring his beer and drop it next to the couch, quickly leaving for my bedroom. Night! He simply opens a bottle and ignores me. My god, Derek! How's your father doing now? He looks down at the floor, and I see tears starting to form in his eyes. I'll... I'll get to that in a second. On the same day while walking to school, I started to think to myself, What is the reason behind this grudge? Why do people just hate each other without a reason? There's no way it's just that. The same day in which I had the early morning incident, I had a little fight with my father before leaving. Never do anything around here, you utter sloth! Me? Look at you! All you do is lay in bed all day watching football and wasting your sad-ass life! I'm the only one who actually takes care of the house while you lays around! Your mother would be disappointed. Don't you dare speak of her! You start passing as an excuse to just fuck life, to just fuck life and do what you want. 
careless and with no responsibility. I started tearing up as my voice started to break. Why don't you just die, too? It won't make a difference. Oh, no. I wonder how he's doing. I think I was a bit rough on him that time. As I arrived in front of my house, I noticed the door being slightly open. Well, that's odd. I opened it cautiously and entered the house. Well, that's not good. The moment I walk on, I notice how the blinds are fully shut, blocking fair daylight out and blocking fair daylight out and keeping an odd, rancid smell inside. It's alcohol combined with something metallic. It's so strong, I have to cover up my nose. As I walk through the darkness, I start to notice the countless bottles of beer I'm bumping into with my feet. And the smell. It seems to get stronger the closer I get to my father's room. The metallic scent takes over the alcoholic one, having a rotten quality to it, too. The whole house looks as if a storm just passed by, wrecking everything in its way. I reach for the handle to his room and slowly open it. G Dad, you need to clean... After yourself. Oh. Oh, God. A storm did pass, and it seems to have taken something with it. His body was lifelessly hanging from the ceiling. A trail of blood ran down his torso, dripping to the floor. I was numb. Countless thoughts rushed through my head, and I had no idea what to do. I can't remember what it is I said, but I knew I'd let out a primal shrill falling to my knees. My fists hit the damp carpet, crimson flying in the air and into my eyes. Tears were streaming down like a river full of pain. Droplets were bitterly falling onto the floor. I heard the front door bust open along with rushed steps heading for the room. Child, what's all this screaming about? Our neighbor runs in and she lets out a frightful gasp. Come on, we need to go! I start to writhe in pain and grief, scratching at anything that was near me, including my neighbor. I was kicking and shouting while she dragged me out of the dimly lit room and which held what my, my father left behind. Derek was holding back tears while giving me a warm smile. The police declared her a suicidal act. There was nothing more to it, apparently. So yeah, I'm speechless. So I do all it is. So I do all. So all I do is give him a tight hug. Derek, I'm so sorry. He hugs me back, and we break off bef before for a few moments. Well, those things clearly wouldn't do any good for anyone. However, there's a chance of either falling into despair or being blushed by a clear light. I was lucky enough to be the latter. I just sat there and looked deep into his eyes. There's nothing but kindness and warmth in them. Something outside the window catches my gaze. My mouth is gaping at the whole beautiful sight. Countless flowers were happily blooming in the afternoon sun. Whoa, what's the, what's the secret? Hmm? To what? To such a nice garden. My eyes were glued to the plants. Oh, just watering them and I'm in love, I guess. A lonely golden rose catches my eye. Its yellow petals were slowly dancing along the gentle breeze. It was all a little magical sight. Hey. Hey, Jonah, could you do me a favor? Sure. Bring me a flower pot from the garage, will you? I nod my head enthusiastically and rush to the garage. Hmm. I look around everywhere and come across no such thing as a flower pot. Uh, oh! On a high shelf, I see a few flower pots laid out nicely in a linear manner. I could reach it if I tried, but maybe someone else could do it for me. <laughs> You're so frail and pretty and pretty, little one. I say as I caress the tiny rose. I carefully snap her from the bottom and place her in a cup of water. Ten minutes pass, and no Jonas seems to be in sight. What is he doing? I walk in the garage, and to my surprise, it's empty. Hey, Jonah, you here? Silence. If you're trying to... Got you! <sighs> ah! Jonah, Jonah jumps on me from behind a closet, making me jump and making us fall to the ground with him on top. That's so stupid. Jonah, why would you do that? Our faces are just inches apart the point where I could feel his breath on my face. In an instant, Jonah turns red as an apple and springs off me. S Sorry, I didn't think it through. I get up with a chuckle. Heh, <laughs> I'm surprised you could bring me down. What can I say? I'm full of surprises. Ooh, what is that? Ooh, a nickel. Ooh, a piece of candy. He asks as he walks over to a bunch of gardening tools. This is my torture rack. The next 20 minutes or so, Derek shows me around his, Derek shows me around his garage and explains to me how crucial some tools are for gardening. Hmm. Hey. Derek? Hey, Derek, what about you? Bear hug! <laughs> Gah! In a flash, the, bear, big, the big bear embraces me tightly from behind, lifting me in the air. But not fair! I thought we stopped! I can't help but laugh at the whole silly situation. Well, it isn't, well, it wasn't fair when you surprised me either. Also, he brings his mouth closer to my ear and whispers, Free real estate. It's only fair that I punish you. 
I feel his hot breath tickle my ear. He runs his hand down my side and stops on my hip. I hear a low growl come from him. My heart starts to pound by the second. I feel my face grow hotter than ever, but just let what happens happen. Just let what happens happen. Whoop! In a swift motion, he lifts me off the floor. Ah! What are you doing? He slowly approached some bushes in the back garden. Oh no, sir, you don't! I wriggled just enough so I slipped out of his arms, and just before I fell, I clinged onto his shirt collar, bringing him down with me. Whoa! We both lay sideways on the soft blades of grass, giggling like two children. Our eyes intersect, and we just look at each other, and I feel my face grow a little hot. Oh, I nearly forgot! He springs up and goes to grab the flower pot. After he puts some soil in it, he plants the rose in it and hands it to me. I saw how much he liked it, so keep it as a symbol of our meetup. He smiled warmly. I gingerly take the pot and take a little whiff of the flower. As expected, it's divine. Thanks a lot, Derek, for everything. Before he can speak, my phone vibrates violently in my pocket. I think we can all guess who it is. I pick up the phone and hesitantly hold it up over to my ear. Andy Usher! Oh, Joni, Jonah Usher. Jonah, Andy Usher. If a thousand storms could be portrayed onto a single voice, this would be the prime example. What are you doing and where are you? You're not at home and you ignore my texts! Ow, could you at least try not to burst my eardrums? Could you at least try not to give me a damn heart attack? A fair point, I guess. And yeah, I'm alright. I'll tell you everything when I get home. Stop worrying. Hm. Alright. Text me the second you get home. No later. Jeez, fine, fine. See ya. Fuh ya. I hang up the phone and let a relieved sigh. Derek, however, was getting a kick out of my ear getting abused. Well, I guess that's my signal to leave. Yeah, well, we'll keep in touch. Of course. I embrace him one last time before I move, before I leave. Hold on. Wait, where am I? Oh, right. Didn't, didn't I, didn't I tell, I didn't tell you, did I? Sunshine Street. As the taxi pulls up, I wave to Derek one more time and leave. Today surely was eventful. I feel so stupid. I'll never let it take control of me that way ever again. After paying for the ride, I enter my apartment and just can't wait to tuck in for the night. I let out a relief sigh and place my keys on their little spot next to the door. Nights are so beautiful around here. There's not so many clouds in the sky, as all, and the sky is always full of glimmering stars. I walk over to my bed, ready to let myself fall on it. Hmm? Yeah, who the hell? I reach for the closet closest object to me, a water bottle, and smack whoever was sitting on my bed. Ow, 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 what was that for? Eh, Andy? Ow, yes, that's me. What the hell are you doing in my apartment? How did you even get in? I wanted to make sure you actually got home. And I also know where you keep your spare key. I also wanted to make sure you'd 100% text me. I was going to... Anyways, what happened? Why did you randomly disappear for the whole day? <laughs> well, you see... My god, Jonah. Yeah, I... I okay. My god, Jonah. He just looked at me, not knowing how to react. I'm so sorry, when did this start happening? A few years ago, right when... My head throbs. Maybe I'll tell you some other time. He looks at me with a very concerned and sad look, but nods nevertheless. So... He's back to his usual self already. What's he like? So that's what we're doing now. I proceed to describe Derek, maybe more than I would like to admit, and his smile seems to grow more and more by the second. Wow, he sounds like such a nice guy. He's surely a good match for someone as boring as you. Smack. Ow, uh, okay, sorry, sorry. Hmm. Anyways, you start working out tomorrow? He says that as he gets up, getting ready to leave. Huh? Just like that? Out of nowhere? I I'm gonna start working out tomorrow. I tomorrow? I have to zero knowledge of fitness, Andy. Gee, calm down. I sorted it all out. You go to sleep and make sure you wake up early tomorrow, and I'll send you the details of it all tomorrow morning. Uh, fine. Are you sure you're okay with walking home alone, though? Of course. Just before he leaves, he turns his head my way slightly. Oh, forgot to tell you, the gym is full of other kin. No humans. Eh? Why? You know, so you get to know more of them? How else will you get get the two races to understand each other if you don't understand them to begin with? I do know Otherkin, though. Yeah, right. Anyone beside Derek? Y yeah. No. Exactly. Well... He opens the door. I'll see you tomorrow. Sleep well. He smiles at me before disappearing outside my room. He sure is smart when he wants to be. I let out a sigh and let myself drop into my bed. Feeling today's fatigue take me down all at once. Hmm. Three weeks fly, b fly before my eyes but without realizing, with nothing big happening except more frequent meetings with Derek. Even Andy met him now. He's just, he just so happened to be on a walk near the cafe we always went to. 
If anything, my bond with Derek grew stronger, and nothing bad could be seen could be seen on the far horizon. Chapter three. A bear too far. At Lucio. Oh. The morning light slowly brings me to my senses, and the faint whistling of the wind in the distance makes me want to just fall asleep again. That is until my phone vibrates. Damn, six missed calls from Andy. A text from him reads out, Hey, sleepy boy, you'll be meeting your coach at lunch, so make sure you get there on time. I snort as I... <laughs> Ow! Ow! That hurt. Sorry for the late reply, but don't worry, I'll get there on time. Also, would it hurt you to ask me for my opinion on certain matters every now and then? How can you be certain everything you choose is the right thing? I put the phone down, but a little moment later, Andy texted back. Call it the Andy sense. Stop winking, you creep. Okay. Well, I need to kill off the. I need to kill off like three hours now. We've been planning my meetup with a coach for a few weeks now. Apparently, the closest gym is so busy that there was barely any coaches available. I noticed the lone rose sitting on my windowsill. The rose he gave me on the day we met. That day in which my mind took a darker turn. Its gold quality was shimmering in the sun. It made your soul feel light the more you looked at it. Huh. I guess Derek's love makes his flower makes his flowers look somewhat less magical. Look somewhat magical. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. The coach's name is Oscar Nelder. Here's a picture just so you know who to look for. I open the file and I snort. Did you get this off the internet or something? No, no, I'm serious. It, it, he, I know it's not your average coach, but that will have to do. I sigh and place the phone in my pocket. More other kid in my life won't hurt, I guess. What is it now? To my surprise, it's Derek. Morning. How you doing? After yesterday and all? Oh, hey, way better to be honest. Gonna start going to the gym from today. Is that so? Care to share the name? Wait, what is the name? I swipe to Andy's contacts. Name of the gym? Does your love interest require it? I'm taken aback by his accuracy and bluntness. The name, please? Furgim? 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 Great name? I know, right? Suits it. That was sarcasm. Oh. I go back to Derek's contacts. Ah, sorry for the delay. It's named Furgim. Cool, cool. I'm gonna go for a run, so, uh, talk later? Sure. I start to mindlessly scroll through the internet, and one particular post catches my attention. Intense meditation for mind-clearing purposes. Hmm, wouldn't hurt to try, I guess. After watching some odd lecture on what to do, I sat down on the floor and crossed my legs. Hands in the shape of a bowl below the abdomen. Take deep breaths and focus on the rhythm. God, this is stupid. I have nothing better to do, so I'm just going to sit here and... <sighs> Burn. My eyes shoot open, and I see nothing but darkness. Not this again. Just die. How did he even get here? Wherever, wherever he is, whoever here is, you're not my son anymore. I turn around sharply to look for the source of the voice, but it is a va but it is in vain, as it feels like the voice is coming from every direction. All right, guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!